David was in the blood bat's nest in the underground forest. The thousand-year-old dark tree in the deepest part of the cavern was like a spine supporting the entire underground world. Under the dark tree, there were three fire-cloud grasses and a blood-ghost child flower. They were faintly discernible in the darkness, like spirits in the night, exuding mysterious and bright auras. However, at the same time, countless dark, icy auras surged from every direction. Tens of thousands of blood-red pairs of eyes were like strange lanterns. Sharp, strange cries resounded through the air, interweaving as they emitted an ear-piercing sound wave. In an instant, countless blood-red bats were awakened from the dark tree. Looking at the blood-hooked bats as they hung on the tree, Linus and the other three were so scared that their faces turned white and their scalps prickled. David did not react. Wild Monkey could not resist shouting, This is the end! In a moment, the rustling sounds of air being slapped came crashing in like a surging wave. The vast group of blood-hooked bats rushed over. Their greedy blood-red eyes were emitting a strong, bloodthirsty light. Their sharp claws and teeth were shining with an intimidating light. Why are there so many? Wild Monkey was so scared his face turned ashen. We're dead meat! The group of ferocious bats was like a group of hungry devils from hell pouncing toward the group. But David's gaze turned serious, and he knelt on the ground. The airflow trembled violently, and a towering purple flame rose before them. The demonic and overbearing purple flame built into a wall, and once a flying blood-hooked bat touched the purple demonic flame, it immediately turned into a ball of fire. Amid the crisscrossing sharp and shrill cries, the blood-hooked bats were burnt into nothingness. What? He's that powerful? Linus's and the other's eyes lit up. And at the back, Gina exclaimed. The blood-hooked bats in front were blocked by the purple firewall, but a large group of bats flew down from behind as well. David glanced sideways, a dark blue lightning radiance flickering within his deep eyes. In the next moment, countless frantic strength of thunder and lightning arcs flowed out from David's body. The wantonly interweaving electric arcs caused the sky to rumble as thunderbolts flew. Tens of thousands of lightning bolts intertwined together to form a net that blocked that massive, dense swarm of bats. Thunder and fire rained, and thunder blades flashed. One after another, voltaic blades that were emitting a sharp, cold energy penetrated the group of blood-hooked bats' bodies. Fresh blood danced in the air as a sharp aura tore through it. Countless blood-hooked bats were instantly shredded into pieces by the Thunderblade's net. Seeing such powerful attacks, Linus and the other three were once again shocked. Their eyes were filled with adoration as they looked at David. Bringing you here was indeed not wrong. Linus immediately calmed down and said, Junior brother David, help me. Attract the bats. The three of us will go get the fire cloud grass and the blood ghost child flower and bring them to the iron door. All right. I got it. Understood. The three of them spoke decisively. Linus's figure quickly flew out, and the three of them followed closely behind. Although David had attracted a large portion of the blood hook bat's attacks, as soon as the four of them moved out of the range of the burning demonic flame and the assassination divine lightning, dozens of blood hooked bats turned around and pounced toward them. I'll hack you apart with my sword. Iron Door glared, and with a raise of his hand, a thick and heavy broadsword appeared. The powerful true elemental strength climbed onto the sword body and transformed into a layer of undulating sword energy light pattern. Swinging his sword, the imposing and heavy sword body solidly smashed onto the bodies of some blood-hooked bats. Heavy muffled sounds overlaid each other as the blood-hooked bats were sent flying, heavily smashing into the ground and the dark tree. They trembled in fear 
and fresh blood seeped out of their mouths and noses. Although there were no external injuries, their internal organs were under extreme attack. At the same time, Gina waved her wrist. Accompanied by a sharp wind and lightning force, a long whip, like a spirit serpent, shot out. Wherever she moved, the shadows of the whip would rain down. Every time she struck a blood-hooked bat, a fire would burst out in the air. Immediately after, the blood-hooked bat that was struck fell to the ground powerlessly and cried out. Seeing the four of them acting in concert, David didn't have any intention of going forward. To be honest, he alone was enough to get the three fire-cloud grasses and the blood-ghost baby flower. But since the four of them were already in front of him, he might as well just let them go. Under the cover of Gina and the others, Linus rushed as fast as he could to the deepest area in front of the thousand-year ghost tree. The gigantic dark tree was like a colossal monster. Linus couldn't wait and ran under the tree. His gentle palm power struck the ground as he carefully dug out the three fire cloud grasses along with the soil. It's here! Linus's eyes were shining brightly as if he was holding on to the most precious treasure. These three stalks of flaming cloud grass could be exchanged for around 200 or so star key marks, and those 200 star key marks were an enormous sum of wealth. Linus placed the fire cloud grasses into a storage ring that was kept by itself, and then with two steps, flashed in front of the blood ghost child flower that was on the other side of the tree. Looking at the strange flower core, Linus rubbed his palms together. Then, with the same method as before, he dug out the blood ghost child flower from the moist soil along with a clump of soil. Got it! Right at the instant when Linus took out the flower, an extremely dark and cold aura enveloped it. He was alarmed. Before he could react to what had happened, however, a pair of huge bloodshot eyes opened on the tree. Its vertical pupils were bloodshot as the eyes slowly moved. In an instant, Linus felt as if he was being looked at by a devil from hell. Mother, help! Linus's voice carried throughout the underground forest and the cave. Then, the man turned around and ran. Wild Monkey and Iron Door shook. Gina's scalp went numb and she broke out in a cold sweat. On the gigantic dark tree, an enormous blood-hooked bat slowly spread its huge wings. It's the king of blood-hooked bats, Wild Monkey exclaimed. Something is not right. It's a revered demonic beast. Hurry up and run! Compared to the other blood-hooked bats, this bat king was like a sinister evil being that had walked out of the door of darkness. Its enormous body was covered in red fur, and the terrifying aura it released surged like a tide, directly covering the entire underground forest. In the next second, the Bat King had already leaped out of the thousand-year ghost tree. Everywhere it passed, dark and sturdy trees were broken into pieces by its wings. The auras of the undercurrents assaulted them. It was as if they had fallen into a cave of ice and were instantly surrounded by the aura of death. But at this moment, a dozen bolts of mixed blue lightning flashed past the four of them. They were shocked, and then an explosion rang out behind them. A figure covered entirely in lightning crashed directly against the enormous body of the Bat King. As the lightning and thunder interweaved, a shockwave filled the sky. The Blood Bat King was forcibly pushed back. That was close. Fortunately, we have Junior Brother David. The four of them wiped away their cold sweat and looked at David, who was standing in front of the Blood Bat King. Junior Brother David, be careful. We will wait for you outside, Linus said. You guys are too heartless, Gina quickly said. It's not that we're not loyal but the four of us will be a burden to him if we stay here. Boss is right. Hurry up. The Blood Bat King's eyes were blood red, and they revealed a strong bloodlust. He stared at David fiercely, then opened his mouth, exposing his sharp fangs. 
A dense energy of destruction was released as he spat out a ray of blood-red liquid from his mouth. As the blood mist attacked, it was mixed with a thick, fiendish aura. David's gaze darkened slightly. He did not dare to underestimate his opponent. He moved, dodging the attack. The red light was like a bunch of poisonous demon blades, and the ground that David was standing on earlier was immediately torn apart. Blood continuously spurted out from the blood bat king's mouth. Each stream was extremely destructive, and wherever it went, rocks were cleanly cut off while trees were torn apart like paper. Even the other blood-hooked bats that were struck exploded into pieces in an instant. Even though the blood bat king's power was terrifying, David remained calm and collected. Not a single trace of fear could be seen in his eyes. He glanced at Linus and the other three who were already at the edge of the forest. Then he squinted his eyes and clenched one of his hands. The concentrated dark blue divine lightning quickly gathered in his palm. In the blink of an eye, a two to three meter wide lightning ball took shape. One after another, Lightning bolts wantonly swam up and down the electric ball, moving chaotically like numerous silver snakes. David lifted his palm, and in a split second, the ball of lightning shot out. Everywhere it went, the trees were smashed into pieces. The domineering ball of lightning struck the blood bat king's body, and a violent burst of energy gushed out from it. Accompanied by the wanton blooming of the lightning light pattern, the entire underground forest cave began to shake violently. The Blood Bat King was also sent flying. Its enormous body smashed through a large piece of the dark tree and into a pile of rubble. However, in less than two seconds, the Bat King actually managed to get up. A sharp and strange howl resounded through the entire underground forest as an invisible sound wave reverberated outward. Linus and the other three, who were still running, covered their ears with their hands and dropped to their knees in pain. David frowned. The Bat King's defense was frightening. If it was a normal supreme demonic beast, that strike just now would have caused them to lose their fighting strength. But the Bat King stood up immediately as if nothing had happened. Seeing Linus and the other three kneeling, David did not plan to fight for a long time. Looks like I need to end this quickly. David's pupils trembled, and a black flame aura surged around him. But at this moment, a series of booms shook the entire mountain cave. Before David and the rest could react, the ground shook and rocks exploded. The mountain above their heads split apart from the middle. A surge of violent power, like a flash flood, set off endless stormy waves. The rock walls were fractured as the mountain continued splitting open. The clear blue sky and white clouds soon appeared above them, and the blinding light quickly drove away the darkness. The air outside swept through. Everyone was shocked. Someone had actually split open this cave from the outside. Linus and the rest cursed as they avoided the rocks. Who did this? Aren't you afraid of crushing us? Crap, he's too reckless. Soon, the enormous underground lush forest was totally exposed. A bright and solid golden light column descended from the sky. As it moved, the golden light column became as sharp as a spear. With its hiss, the sound of the weapon piercing through flesh was pleasant to listen to. The pillar of light had directly pierced through the blood-hooked Bat King's body and firmly nailed it into the rock on the ground. A cold air wave covered the sky and shook the audience. Linus, Wild Monkey, and the other two were terrified. What incredible power! Yes, who is it? Just one strike had killed the blood-hooked Bat King, who was known for his powerful defensive power. Such a powerful aura had completely crushed everything. Everyone looked up at the sky. There were three towering figures. The person in the lead was handsome and bright, and an extraordinary arrogance was surging from him. On the front of his clothes, there was an embroidered unicorn. 
In the center of his palm, there were traces of a gorgeous, golden, flowing shadow. He gazed indifferently at the dying Bat King. When he saw the three people standing in the air, David's pupils faintly shrank as he clenched his fists tightly, and a dense coldness surged from him. It's them! Linus, Wild Monkey, and the other two immediately trembled. Their faces were filled with an unprecedented level of reverence. It's Priam! He was an existence that the Martial Sect Disciples could only look up to. On the Heavenly Martial Ranking, he was ranked third amongst the top demon-level talents. The mountain was broken, and the earth was torn apart. Even the spectacular mountain waterfall was disrupted. As the chaotic energy wantonly flowed out, Linus and the other three trembled. Their eyes were filled with shock and reverence as they looked at the three imposing and proud figures in the sky. Priam! It's senior brother Priam! Priam was a name that the martial sect disciples revered. He was even ranked third on the heaven martial ranking. His sudden appearance was like the arrival of a king. The aura he exuded was enough to make anyone's heart tremble. Senior Brother Lane and Senior Brother Amari are here as well. Why would the three of them come? The two people behind Priam had similar, arrogant auras. Lane was ranked ninth on the Heaven Martial Ranking, and he was a powerful Grandmaster level Pattern Master. Amari ranked tenth on the Heaven Martial Ranking. No matter where these three people appeared, they were dazzling existences. And when David saw the three people clearly, he couldn't help but clench his fists tightly, a dense coldness surging through his eyes. He instantly thought back to what had happened in the unicorn ruins outside Heaven Hidden City about half a year ago. At that time, he was trying to find where Michelle was. He chanced upon the three of them hunting the soul of the black unicorn in the unicorn cave. There was no enmity between them and it was the first time he met them. Who would have thought that Priam would actually indiscriminately smash David into the magma inside the Earth's core? Although David was not injured, Priam was able to destroy the sentencing armor that was refined with a five-star strength of demonic eye, establishing a negative relationship. David did not have any idea that those three people were from the Marshall sect. However, Priam and the other two did not seem to notice David at all, as their eyes were fixated on Linus and the other three. Their condescending attitude was as if they were looking down upon an ant. The four of them were already terrified and looked nervous as they muttered in low voices. Why are they here? Could it be that Faber leaked this secret? These last few days, he and I have been around each other. I knew we wouldn't be able to trust that bastard, but you insisted on working with him. Now, are you inviting wolves? Before Linus and the other three had met David, they had also sought cooperation from others. It was either because the reward was too low or because of the high risk factor that no one was willing to go with them to the dark forest and provoke the blood-hooked bats. Among them was Faber, who was previously known as the number one new disciple. My three senior brothers, thanks for helping us kill the blood hook bat king. Linus laughed awkwardly. Amari smiled lightly and replied, Coincidentally, we need those three fire cloud grasses. Bring them over. He glanced at Priam, raised his eyebrows, and continued, Right and also that blood ghost child flower that's refining the spirit stone. That was the last thing David wanted to see happen. The three of them had no other purpose but to refine the fire cloud grass and the blood ghost child flower. We got this first, Wild Monkey replied, but his voice was obviously weak without any sort of confidence. Even the big, tall iron door seemed to lack any sense of existence in front of the three of them. Oh? Amari pretended to be surprised and said, You mean we are stealing your things? The four of them paled. 
Linus quickly waved his hand. We don't dare. We definitely do not have that intention. I don't like to repeat myself. Give it to me. Amari's smile revealed an irresistible chill. The four of them immediately became weak like helpless sheep. With trembling hands, Linus took out a storage ring. In his eyes, there was only helplessness. No matter how unwilling he was, it was useless. They were just ordinary disciples at the lowest level of martial sect. Normally, they wouldn't receive any attention, just like they were stepping stones for other geniuses. In front of disciples of the Heaven Martial ranking, there was even less dignity. Even if Priam, Amari, and Lane killed the four of them here, most likely the higher-ups of the Martial sect would not even bother to question them. The rules of the sect. The law of the jungle. The lives of the disciples at the bottom level were cruel. Amari revealed a satisfied smile. He stepped forward, and with a move of his palm, a strong suction force appeared. The storage ring in Linus's hand flew into his palm. He looked at Priam and Lane, and then looked back at Linus and the other three, and said, Thank you very much. His frivolous thanks seemed even more like a great irony. The four could only silently endure this. The three turned around and were about to leave. But at this moment, an indifferent voice was heard. Wait. The low and deep voice was like an invisible hand firmly locking the figures of everyone present. They all turned to look in one direction. The young figure that was almost ignored slowly walked out from within the rubble. Amari revealed a look of surprise and said with interest, I forgot. There's an invisible one at the side. David walked calmly with a relaxed expression. He slowly walked to the front of the group and looked straight up to meet Amari's arrogant and contemptuous gaze. I'm sorry, but all you have is the right to take away those three fire cloud grasses. As for that blood ghost child flower, it is mine. His voice had an air of arrogance, indicating he could not be bullied. Everyone was startled. The four people with him were so scared their faces turned ashen. Linus hurried forward and said softly, I say, brother, are you crazy? These three people shouldn't be offended, so just quickly admit your defeat. The four of them were practically scared to death by David's stance. David had some ability. His strength was enough to compete with the Green City young master, Pax McDonald. But none of the three people in front of him was Pax McDonald. They were far stronger a mere David simply wasn't enough. His actions, in the eyes of Linus and the others, were undoubtedly courting death. But, no matter how Linus pleaded with his eyes, it was as if David had never seen him before. He continued with a calm expression. I will refine the blood ghost child flower. Please return it. Linus and the other three were practically on the verge of tears. It wasn't easy for Linus to get rich and save himself from disasters, but now he met with trouble because of David. As he silently cursed David for being blind, he also quietly pulled the other three people far away. The temperature of the air currents became slightly cold. While meeting David's indifferent eyes, Amari's gaze gradually turned colder. He did not get angry, but laughed, revealing the storage ring in his palm. Since I'm giving it back to you, you can come and get it yourself. The corner of David's eye twitched. Are you sure? Priam crossed his arms in front of his chest as a trace of doubt flashed past his eyes. This person looks familiar. Lane laughed playfully. We have indeed seen him before. Do you need me to remind you? He is the one who defeated Simon. Oh? Oh? Priam was slightly surprised, but he sneered. No need. You don't have the qualifications to make me remember you, nor do you have the qualifications to make me think about you. In response to David's rhetorical question, Amari's smile gradually grew colder, and his eyes were filled with ridicule. 
Of course. If you take it back, it will be yours. Ha! Huh. The corner of David's mouth rose. There's no need. The moment he said that, David's body erupted with a biting, cold sword force. He waved his hand, and with the sound of wind being torn apart, a dark blue holy sword formed circles of flowing sword waves that swept toward Amari in the air. Looking at the blue rain sword flying toward him, Amari didn't have any intention of moving. Hump, he's going to use such a despicable move. But just as he finished speaking, a set of residual shadow floated in front of Amari. David who was below just a second ago, appeared in front of him like a ghost in a flash. He's so fast! Below, Linus and the other three had their eyes open wide. David raised the sword he was holding, and an even more astonishing and boundless sword force engulfed Amari. The formless, ice-cold sword immediately locked him in place. In an instant, David transformed into a dozen extremely sharp, human-shaped sword energies, shocking everyone who was watching. One sword flying, immortal arts. A biting cold energy swept out. The dazzling humanoid sword energy brought about an endless amount of power and rushed toward Amari. Every single sword energy was dragging an air current. Amari's pupils contracted, and with a single hand... A ball of deep blue water spread out from his body, grew to a few dozen meters, and enveloped Amari's body. The shining light pattern swayed in the huge water ball. Every single humanoid sword energy that entered the water ball would drag out numerous white light beams that intertwined with shadows and pass through the water ball. Regardless of their attack or speed, they were all greatly reduced in an instant. Before each of the humanoid sword energies could hit Amari, they lost their lethality. This won't do. The defense of his vast ocean saint body is too strong. Why doesn't this guy listen to advice? Linus and the other three did not have any confidence in him. Furthermore, at the same time that the dozen or so human-shaped sword energies disappeared, a blinding light that belonged to the dark blue thunder and lightning exploded from within. The thousands of thundershines were like a flower of lightning that bloomed in an instant. The wantonly flowing lightning power spread through the water ball at a speed countless times faster than normal. In an instant, the entire interior and exterior of the gigantic water ball was enveloped by a majestic three-dimensional electric net. The boundless assassination divine lightning assaulted Amari completely. He was shot. He had underestimated David's strength of thunder and lightning. Without saying a word, Amari retreated. But in the next instant, a figure whose entire body was covered with sturdy thunder arcs flashed in front of him. Humph! Accompanied by a frivolous sneer, David punched out. A fist covered with a large number of thunder shines charged straight at his opponent. In a rush, Amari raised his hand to receive it. However, what he misjudged was not only David's profound energy divine lightning, but also David's tyrannical fist force. An incredibly heavy explosive sound was heard. The moment the fist and palm collided, a violent force spread out. The huge water ball burst like a star exploding. The powerful force tore apart the ball from the inside. Terrifying energy shockwaves swept in all directions. The cliffs below cracked. Amari's body shook violently as an incomparably powerful energy entered it like a hidden wave in the deep sea. At the same time as he retreated, a dense amount of lightning energy surged into his body. His left hand, which was lightly clenched, went numb. His five fingers could not help but loosen and open as a shiny storage ring flew out of his palm. David raised his hand and caught the storage ring. A domineering aura of a king could be felt. The airflow between heaven and earth swept out. David took the storage ring, his eyes cold. Good. Good. 
Good. David stepped on the air, and with one hand, he held the storage ring that he had snatched from Amari's hands. From his face, the imposing aura of a king controlling the entire situation appeared. The appearance of this scene instantly caused the audience to fall into a deathly silence. Linus and the other three were all dumbstruck, their hearts trembling. All their faces were filled with shock and disbelief. Amari's disdainful attitude was to challenge David to four moves, but David slapped him across the face. He wouldn't even need to use the fourth move. With an even more imposing attitude, David snatched back the storage ring that had fallen into Amari's hands. If it was someone else, it would be fine. However, Amari was a genius ranked 10th on the Heavenly Marshal ranking. Even Green City Young Master Pax McDonald would be afraid of fighting him. However, Amari had never expected that such a reversal would occur. Thank you for your help, Senior Amari. This is mine now. David nodded his head and placed the storage ring into his own pouch. Amari's face instantly darkened. As he clenched his fists, his face revealed a cold expression. Um, it's too early to be happy right now. I didn't say I can't take it back. Amari stepped into the air and rose up, and a gust of dense and vast energy surged out. With him as the center, the heaven and earth were filled with water and fog-like flowing beams of light. The beams of light swirled around Amari rapidly, intertwining with each other and shooting up into the sky, immediately transforming into a majestic green water dragon. Wrath of the Cyan Dragon! Amari bellowed, powerful aura sweeping out. The gigantic green water dragon looked down. It blew fire from its mouth, raised the might of a mountain, and pounced toward David, who was below. The surging flames caused David's clothes to flutter and the surrounding space to distort. David raised his head, and a purple glow seemed to pulsate in his eyes. With a shudder in his heart, the overflowing purple demonic flames rose and folded like a tsunami's wave. At the same time, a shocking dragon roar resounded. In that moment, a dragon shadow covered in purple flames shot into the sky straight toward the green water dragon while burying its fangs and brandishing its claws. Demon, burial, silence. With a heavy thump, the intense battle between the two huge dragons, two ferocious, ancient, vicious beasts, began. Green waves mixed with purple flames, and two different colored shock waves swept out in all directions. Water and fire were incompatible. White vapor gushed out. Under normal circumstances, water could counter fire, but to everyone's surprise, balls of purple flames quickly climbed up the water dragon's body and engulfed it. Linus and the other three were practically scared silly. Although they had previously witnessed the tyranny of David's purple flames when they were dealing with him, they had not expected that the power of his boundary of blood lineage could be this strong. Priam, who was standing in the back, slightly narrowed his eyes as he looked at David with some unknown meaning. Lane, a grandmaster level pattern master who was beside him, hesitated for a moment, then said in a low voice, it seems like Amari did not have much of an advantage. The corners of Priam's mouth raised into a frivolous smile. Prolonging it for too long is meaningless. Go tell Amari to finish it as soon as possible. No problem. Lane laughed, and immediately after, his figure flashed toward the two people in front of him. At the same time, a torrent of spiritual inner strength exploded out of his stage palace. He raised both his hands slightly, and many magnificent and luxurious runes and secret talismans that were as bright as the stars appeared and took form between his fingers. Not good. 
Lane is going to use his trump card. Wild Monkey whispered. Two against one. This is too unfair, isn't it? They're two people on the Heaven Marshal ranking. These two disciples of the Heaven Marshal ranking joined forces to deal with a novice who had just entered the sect. It was unfair. But even so, Linus and the other three could only keep quiet and feel pity for David. Amari, you are too ruthless. Why don't you allow this junior brother to go? Lane laughed softly. All the runes in front of him fused together and turned into a dazzling talisman array. An extremely restless energy rippled out from the talisman array, and a dangerous aura of destruction brewed. But just as Lane was about to launch his rune attack, David's pupils faintly contracted, and balls of grayish fog-like light surged out of his body. A single palm gripped, bent five of its fingers, and pointed toward the two people in front of it. Heart of Thorns. The earth split open, and the stones flew out. In that instant, an uncontrollable, terrifying aura made the hearts of those watching quiver. What? Soon after, enormous vines drilled up from the cracked ground. Tens of thousands of vines and roots covered the entire mountain with thorns. It was a frightening sight, as though it were the tentacles of countless ghosts from hell itself emerging. In an instant, it covered the entire mountain. What's that? Amari's and Lane's expressions changed. Even Priam frowned slightly. There was no response. All the vines and roots quickly reached into the sky. In the blink of an eye, it was as if a huge 10,000-year-old tree had grown out of nothing. The sturdy and heavy vine roots wantonly expanded outward and smashed the talisman array that Lane had condensed. One after another, giant thorny vines intertwined around Lane's body, forming a magnificent tree cage that trapped him inside. Lane's face darkened, but he snorted and raised both palms out. The beautiful runes turned into sharp shadow blades Sith. The tree trunk and branches were chopped into pieces, and with a movement of his body, Lane flew out of the bramble giant vine's range of attack. At this moment, a loud thump was heard. The powerful green water dragon was suddenly smashed into pieces by the violent and explosive power of the supreme force. The enormous body of the water dragon split into two, and countless water droplets sprinkled down. Amari's pupils contracted slightly. Before he could react, a sharp figure with a peerless aura had already flashed in front of him. He had been too careless. Amari's face changed slightly. A disdainful arc rose from the corner of David's mouth. Underestimating an opponent isn't a good thing. Along with the sound of his voice, a sword glow that was filled with wild and violent lightning streaked across the sky. Amari abruptly condensed a rippling water shield in front of him. But the lightning-like sword shine swept across and solidly hacked that water shield. Its vigorous and sharp sword figure flashed like an iron hook as it tore apart the water shield. A string of meteor shower flames bloomed, and Amari was instantly sent flying. He smashed into the bramble vine behind him. The huge roots of the vine twisted toward him from all directions and tightly wrapped around him. David squinted, and with a move of his palm, his blue rain sword grabbed countless arcs of thundershine and exploded outward. Layers of sword waves flowed through the cold tip of the sword as it cut through the air toward Amari. His pupils constricted tightly as an ice-cold death aura enveloped him within. Amari landed atop the bramble vines and was instantly entangled by its huge roots from all directions. In the next moment, the blue rain sword in David's hand shot out of his palm like an arrow leaving the bow its power like flowing light, dragging circles of the light patterns and directly slashing toward Amari's throat. 
a thick aura of death spread out. Amari's pupils contracted, his face instantly turned deathly white. And right at that moment, a majestic force that was like raging waves roared from behind Amari. An invisible wave of true essence surged forth. The blue rain sword that was encircling the thundershine was immediately blasted back when it was less than half a meter away from Amari. The trees on the huge thorny vine split inch by inch, layer by layer. Dazzling golden light column tore apart all the thorny vines and pierced through many tree roots. It was like a divine sword slanted into the sky, slashing down toward David. David's pupils slightly contracted, and before he could react, the imposing golden light column was already right in front of him. A fierce and cold shock wave spread out between the heavens and earth. The sudden attack contained an extremely shocking strength of thunderclap. The impact struck David, causing him to tremble and fall to the ground on his back. His feet dragged for more than 10 meters before he managed to stabilize himself. A majestic aura spread out in all directions. The dense thorny vines collapsed and the roots began to wither. A young man whose entire body was emitting a proud aura appeared in the air right in front of Amari. David clenched one hand into a fist. Linus and the rest were all stunned. All of them looked as if they had been frightened like never before. In their eyes, David was just like a monster. David's power had finally made Priam act. Astonishing energy fluctuations brewed from Priam's body. He stood in the air and stared at David, who was below, with a haughty gaze. Just because I don't make a move doesn't mean you have the right to be arrogant in front of me. He was looking down at everyone from above. Nearby, Amari stepped forward and said, Senior brother Priam, I was too careless. Leave. You've been dragging it out too long. Priam's tone was light and indifferent. Amari clenched his teeth, shot an unwilling glance at David, and then went back to stand behind Lane. The latter laughed with a hint of attitude. Humph, I was just underestimating my opponent. Amari replied coldly. Priam confronted David. Cut off one of your arms and we will drop today's matter. Sever his own arm. The corners of David's mouth curved into a cold smile. It really was the same as back in the unicorn cave where Priam looked down on everyone else. Linus and the other three were extremely anxious. All of them were cursing David for provoking Priam. What is it? You want me to do it? If I do, you will lose more than one arm. Priam said calmly, as if he was narrating an ordinary story. As the sound of his voice faded, an invisible and boundless pressure enveloped the area. In an instant, everyone felt as if they were carrying a huge mountain and were unable to move. This was the eighth level of the eternal stage. Linus and the rest had lost all color in their faces as if they had seen the miserable fate of David. Facing the suppression of a realm five levels beyond his own, a hint of black light surged within David's deep eyes. His back was straight as a spear. Then, a layer of strange black flame seeped out of David's body. The black light was like the burning flames of hell as it attached itself to David's back, transforming into a human silhouette. David's eyes showed no fear. The two opponents constantly released their auras, which collided fiercely in the air. Even Amari and Lane were looking at David with somewhat astonished expressions. They never thought that under the suppression of Priam's aura, he would still be able to display such an astonishing aura. Very good. Receiving the light of fighting intent from David's eyes, Priam smiled. Under his smile, an ice-cold feeling flowed. His five fingers curled, 
and a gold cyclone rapidly gathered at the center of his palm, turning into a golden energy ball. Disappear. With a flick of his fingers, the bright and condensed golden energy ball smashed down. During its movement, the golden energy ball enlarged and erupted with over 10,000 rays of starlight. At the same time, an earth-shaking illusion of a unicorn came roaring from within the energy ball. The terrifying pressure caused the ground under David's feet to continuously crack. The large and small stones were pulverized into fine powder, and just as David was about to be engulfed by the destructive shockwave, a blue ray of light streaked across the sky. It intercepted the golden energy ball. The star sky crystal is the northern sky spell, Amari blurted. An intense explosion resounded in the air. The blue shuttle firmly intersected with the golden shockwave. In a split second, a wave of raging strength exploded and a torrential gale swept out in all directions. Layers of the ground opened up, sweeping through all the vegetation. Under the violent shaking of space, a large portion of the remaining mountain cave collapsed. A huge pit appeared. North? Northern sky spell? Linus was both shocked and frightened, trembling with his fists clenched. Could it be? I think you're right, Wild Monkey agreed. The airflow trembled slightly and a residual shadow flashed past. Surprisingly, a young figure with a gentle temperament appeared beside David. Seeing this person, even Lane and Amari, the two evildoers on the heavenly martial ranking, couldn't help but drop their eyes as their faces revealed traces of caution. Lane swallowed hard before he said, Ivan. He had an existence ranked fifth on the heavenly martial ranking and he was the number one in Northern Sky Peak College. He was also the only one of the top disciples in the entire Northern Sky Peak College who had entered the Heaven Marshal ranking. Amari and Lane looked serious. Although Northern Sky Peak College existed at the bottom of the four Great Peak Colleges, they still could not use it as a reason to look down on Ivan and Ivan's sudden arrival made Linus and the other three let out sighs of relief. David was a little surprised to see the young man. This man had a gentle temperament and gave people a feeling that he was easy to get along with. Of course, what made David even more confused was that Ivan was actually there to help him. After all, the two of them had never met before, much less become friends or even acquaintances. Ivan, how dare you interfere with my business? Priam's tone was still indifferent. No anger could be heard. Ivan glanced at David behind him, then bowed his head slightly and said with a smile, Senior Brother Priam, I wonder how this novice has offended you. I am apologizing to you on his behalf. I hope you can be magnanimous. Why do you think you need to apologize? This junior brother is a disciple of my Northern Sky Peak College. I humbly request you grant me a favor. I promise I will repay you in the future. Ivan was neither humble nor arrogant. He was both polite and authoritative. Priam gave a frivolous sneer. A favor? You think you're worthy of one? These simple words were an insult to Ivan. At this moment... A slightly cynical chuckle was heard from another direction. <laughs> Priam, are you bullying the novices again? Everyone present was startled, and their gazes uniformly swept the same direction. A young man had appeared out of nowhere and was sitting on a boulder on the southern side of the wall. One hand was on his knee, and a blade of grass hung from the corner of his mouth. My God, it's seen your brother Wilder Thomason. Linus put his hands to his head as if he was in disbelief. Even the number one genius of Southern Spirit Peak College, Wilder, had come? David's eyes widened slightly as the rankings on the sacred tablet that was on the Heavenly Marshal Peak surfaced in his mind. 
He vaguely remembered that Wilder was ranked second on the Heavenly Marshal ranking. He was one rank higher than Priam. No wonder Wilder dared to speak to Priam in such a manner and tone. If Ivan's arrival had made Lane and Amari somewhat serious, then Wilder's appearance had made the two of them feel uneasy. Priam laughed coldly, his eyes narrowed at the other party. What is it? Is this person related to you? It doesn't matter. Wilder spread out his hands and shrugged his shoulders. I was fishing right by the lake nearby, and I came over to take a look when I heard the noise. I didn't expect to see you three eyesores again. Hump, if you think I'm an eyesore, you can leave. Is this back mountain owned by your family? You can tell me to leave, but I won't leave. It could be seen that Priam and Wilder's relationship was not any better. Seeing his expression, Priam's eyes turned slightly cold, and a biting cold aura was quietly released. Are you that anxious to fall from second place? Everyone was shocked. Even Ivan's face revealed a sense of caution. In the face of Priam's blade-like gaze and aura, Wilder's eyebrows slightly rose as if he did not care in the slightest. I heard that your strength of blood lineage boundary increased by leaps and bounds after you subdued the soul of the black unicorn in the unicorn cave, right? I would really like to know. Wilder's tone gradually became heavier. He slowly stood up from the boulder and an equally majestic aura emanated from his body. His voice slightly paused. Then he said, How much has your cultivation increased? The air current between the two seemed to be constantly revolving faster. One was a genius ranked third on the Heavenly Marshal ranking. The other was a freak genius ranked second. One was the chief disciple of the Western Cloud Peak. The other was the number one person of the Southern Spirit Peak. The two seemed to want to confront each other, but the other people around seemed to instantly become foils to them. At this time, Priam took the lead and restrained his aura. Like a rapidly receding tide, it returned to tranquility. Wilder looked slightly confused. Traces of cold light flashed in Priam's eyes as he said coldly, It's a little too early to make a move now. Then, he glanced down at David. You're lucky this time. Don't appear in front of me again. Saying that, a gust of cold wind blew. The light and shadow floated, and Priam disappeared. Lane and Amari also transformed into residual shadows and leaped into the sky. Wilder shook his head and gently chewed on the grass in his mouth. It's over, at least for now. Then the space around him was distorted in a strange way. His body trembled like ripples on the water's surface, and he disappeared from everyone's sight. Although they had seen Priam, Wilder, and the others leave, Linus and the other three remained sitting on the ground without moving. Ivan turned around to look at David and asked, Junior brother David, are you all right? David was startled and replied with some surprise. Senior brother Ivan knows me. It's just that I didn't greet you sooner. He smiled. This is the first time in history that a star key has been challenged, and it's been barely a month since you entered the sect, yet you've already started to fight with the disciples on the Heaven Marshal ranking. Right now, only a few people don't know who you are. Ivan laughed heartily. David rubbed his nose and laughed somewhat embarrassedly. No matter what, I have to thank you for helping me today. Ivan said with some seriousness, Junior brother David, to be honest, being young and vigorous is normal, but sometimes it's better to restrain your edge. Priam is a man who is ruthless, does things his way, and has never shown any mercy. David dropped his eyes slightly, and he smiled and nodded. I will remember your advice. Ivan slightly nodded and did not say anything more. Soon after, his gaze swept across Linus and the rest, the four of them immediately stood up with respectful smiles. Senior brother Ivan, is there anything else you need me to tell you? 
Linus said. Ivan smiled and said, No. Oh, are you sure? Yes, Ivan replied softly. Then he looked at David again. I still have things to do, so I'll be leaving. Originally, Principal Lawson wanted me to ask you to test your boundary of blood lineage again, but I think there's no need for that. Sorry for troubling you, David replied. Farewell, Ivan called as he flew away. When Ivan left, the atmosphere became awkward. Linus, Wild Monkey, and the other two looked at David strangely. Junior brother David, if there's nothing else, we'll be leaving. With that, they turned away. David said, Wait a moment. The four of them were stunned. David took out the storage ring and removed the blood ghost child flower from it. He then threw the ring to Linus. Linus's hand trembled, but he caught the ring. Junior brother David, what's this about? I only want to refine the blood ghost baby flower. With that, David turned and left. Looking at what they had recovered, Linus and the other three had complicated feelings. What should we do? Do you want me to keep it? What if Priam and the rest come to find us? We'll definitely die a terrible death. Damn it, if we die, we die. This is something we obtain by risking our lives. What do we have to be afraid of? What do you mean risking your life? It was obviously David who snatched it back. Ignoring the noisy discussion of the four people behind him, David walked into the even more vast and profound forest behind the mountain. He raised his head and looked at the Azure Nine Clouds heavenly vault, traces of cold light faintly flowing through his eyes as he thought about Priam, Wilder, and Ivan. In the martial set grounds, wind and clouds gathered. The eighth level of the eternal stage was five levels higher than him. Traces of coldness flashed deep within David's eyes. Hmm. So what if you're third on the Heaven Marshal ranking? I will definitely take revenge for the debt paid for the Unicorn Cave. It was early in the morning, and the air was a little chilly on the mountain behind Marshal Sect. In the deep valleys of the lush and verdant mountain forests, many small animals emerged from the cracks of the rocks to search for food. The sound of steady footsteps came through the forest, causing them to turn around and run. It had been five or six days since David obtained the crystal dragon unicorn's marrow and the blood ghost child flower. In these past few days, David had been searching for the five-leaf dewgrass in various regions of the rear mountains. However, there was no trace of it. From the first day he entered, David had already stayed in the rear mountains for more than 20 days, and he had more or less given up at this point. Something like a heavenly material or earthly treasure was a test of luck. If he was lucky, he would be able to find what he was looking for within two or three days. If he was unlucky, it would be futile to stay any longer. After approximately four hours, that heaven-supporting, giant, heavenly martial peak gradually appeared in David's field of vision. Looking at the familiar environment, David's eyes shone with a trace of light. Right after he stepped onto the heaven-ranking soaring cloud square, a familiar figure blocked his path. I say, boss, you finally appeared? I thought you were murdered. This man was none other than Paxson who had a helpless look on his face at the moment. David looked at him in shock. You've been waiting for me here? Where else would I be? Other than this place, I really don't know where else to look for you. David asked, I forgot to ask you at Sky Watching Peak last time. How is the matter that I asked you to help me investigate? He had been exploring the numbers carved on the runes along with the martial arts of his sky-watching peak cave. After guessing that the runes most likely came from the other half of the partial stone ball, David paid attention to it and sought more information. Not yet, Paxson replied with a little tone of complaint. Do you think it's that easy to find someone? Just give me a string of characters. 
The Marshall sect is so huge. Where am I supposed to go and investigate it for you? Since you haven't found it, why were you looking for me? Why? Let me ask you. Have you offended Priam? Priam? Hearing that name, David's eyes flashed with a cold light. Paxson could not help but shake his head. You really know how to cause trouble. When Linus told me about this matter, I thought he was bragging at first. But hearing the whole store, I have to ask, who do you want to offend? David sneered. To be honest, he wasn't the one who provoked Priam. Priam had indiscriminately attacked David in the Unicorn Cave. It was also the three of them under his lead who wanted to snatch the blood ghost child flower. It was obvious that this matter had come to David. He did not try to cause trouble. However, David did not have any intention to explain. I've been busy lately. If there's nothing important, don't look for me. Also, do not hesitate to help me find the origins of those runes. Paxson got quiet, shot him a sidelong glance, and then said, Is there something important? Do you need my help? David was startled, but he asked, Can you get some five-leaf dewgrass? Five-leaf raindrop grass? What do you want that for? It's useful. I don't have it, and I can't find it either. However, I know of a race that has many strange flowers and herbs. She probably has something that you want. Oh, who is it? Look up there. Paxson raised his hand and pointed toward the imposing Sky Marshall Monument in the center of the Soaring Cloud Platform Plaza. Senior Sister Charlotte, who has many unusual items. Of course, she's also the woman with the strangest temper. David looked at the direction Paxson pointed, at the stone tablet. Below Priam's third place ranking, he saw the name Charlotte Dean. She was ranked four on the Heaven Marshal ranking? David was a little surprised. Where can I find her? The Eastern Profound Peak. After approximately half an hour, under Paxson's lead, David entered the area of the Eastern Profound Peak College. This mountain peak was not too large. It wasn't impressive, but it was quiet. In the distance, one could hear the melodious chirping of birds. On one mountain peak, there was an elegant little house. Unlike other courtyards, the hut was made of bamboo and surrounded by a wooden fence with a gate. A cobblestone path extended from the entrance, simple, elegant. Around the small courtyard house, there were pots of bright and strange flowers and herbs. It looked like a garden as it emitted waves of immortal spiritual energy. Paxson reminded David as they walked, I already told you that senior sister Charlotte's temper isn't that good. She doesn't like outsiders to disturb her. I can't guarantee that you'll be able to get the five-leaf dewgrass. Seeing the wooden gate open, David hesitated for a moment and then walked in with large strides. Paxson followed closely behind. The two had just entered the courtyard house when they saw all sorts of expensive flowers and plants that looked like rainbows. Paxson's eyes lit up as he exclaimed, Wow, these are all top quality goods. On the west side of the courtyard house, a young woman dressed in blue was sitting in front of a bamboo table. She gently pressed the scroll on the table with one hand and drew on the paper with a brush. Her clear eyes stared at the painting in front of her, and her exquisite face gave off a gentle and serene aura. It was difficult to imagine that this young and beautiful woman in front of him was the peak genius ranked fourth on the Heaven Marshal ranking. Senior Sister Charlotte? Pax looked concerned as he nudged David, who was beside him, and then walked forward. I am Paxson from Northern Sky Peak College, and this is junior brother David. I have the temerity to come to find you, senior sister. But Charlotte did not even raise her head. She was still only concerned with the matters at hand. The atmosphere became awkward. Then, David bowed his head slightly and said, Senior sister Charlotte, I am David. 
I have come here to find you and ask for a stalk of five leaf dewgrass. I am willing to exchange it for a high price. Charlotte continued to ignore him as if she hadn't heard him. David and Paxson looked at each other. He let out a light breath and asked again, Senior Sister Charlotte, is there anything I can help you with? I'm going to do my best. That's right. Senior Sister Charlotte, please give us a stalk of five-leaf dew grass. Junior Brother David is anxious to use it, Paxson said. A calm voice barely above a whisper asked, Are you done? Charlotte slightly moved her wrist and started writing on the scroll. She didn't even look at the two of them. If you're done, you can go. Paxson shook his head at David as if this result was within his expectations. Let's go. There's no hope. David also felt slightly helpless. Even though he had guessed that it might be difficult to obtain, he did not expect that the other party would ignore him. Just as David was about to turn around and leave, he saw something out of the corner of his eye. What was written on the scroll was a figure standing on top of a cliff. The figure seemed to be wearing a purple fox fur coat with a white collar around its shoulders. It held a sharp sword in its hand, and the tip of the blade had a small zigzag shape. The most peculiar thing was that behind the figure, there was a huge green fox shadow. The fox shadow blocked the sky, and a rain of flowers fell. A formless and aloof aura rose from the painting. At that moment, Charlotte happened to write down a line of beautiful words and closed her eyes. As she began meditating, David slowly read the words. One sword kill, frost, nineteen prefectures. One sword kill frost, 19 prefectures, David called. As he finished speaking, Charlotte, who hadn't even glanced at him or Paxson, raised her head. Her elegant eyes were filled with astonishment as she looked at David. Paxson, who was at the side, was shocked. He pulled at David's elbow as he scolded. What are you doing now? Hurry up and leave with me. Do you know him? Charlotte asked. Him? Which him? Paxson was a little doubtful. Yes, David answered decisively. When? Charlotte asked. It was only a few months ago, at the Tomb of Immortals and Devils. A few months ago, Charlotte said softly, and then muttered. Looks like I've missed it again. She looked at David. Is he still well? As far as I know, there was no one else at that time. Listening to the conversation between the two, Paxton was completely confused. What was going on? Was this a signal? Could it be that the two of them knew each other from before? That still wouldn't make sense. Charlotte actually laughed and then thought, how can he be unrivaled? In my eyes, he was peerless in the world. This time David asked, You know him? He's my savior, but he hasn't even given me a glance. Charlotte's voice grew heavy. Traces of melancholy suffused her eyes as she softly replied, I don't even know his name. Montel Babel. The clear and steady words came out of David's mouth. Charlotte relaxed her delicate eyebrows as a smile that was like a pear blossoming bloomed on her face. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Paxson almost covered his head with his hands. Charlotte, who was always proud and aloof, actually said thank you to David? David nodded his head slightly in response. Then... Charlotte pointed to the east side of the courtyard house. The five-leaf dewgrass that you want. Take whatever you need. After saying thank you, she even gave him a treasure? Paxson's face was full of confusion. David's eyes lit up, and he looked in the direction Charlotte was pointing. 
In a pot of black soil, there were a few small plants that were sparkling and translucent. Their shape was especially odd. Each had five separate leaves, and each leaf had a different color. Under the sunlight, the gentle light of a rainbow was swaying. Senior Sister Charlotte, is there anything I can help you with? David asked. No need. This is the acknowledgement for you giving me his name, Charlotte replied. David nodded. He understood how important a name could be. He walked to the side of the pot of five-leaf dewgrass and carefully picked one. Thank you for your gift, Senior Sister Charlotte. We will be leaving now. Charlotte slightly nodded but didn't say anything else. After she watched David and Paxson disappear through the wooden door, Charlotte's gaze once again returned to the scroll in front of her. Montel Babel. Her beautiful eyes were filled with tears. She gently spread out the left side of the painting with her left hand. Behind the proud and aloof figure standing under the green fox image, there was a little girl around ten years old. The little girl sat curled up on the ground with her family and more than a dozen men in black lying beside her in pools of blood. That year, that year the winter was biting cold and snow was flying through the sky. Her family had been killed. However, just as she was about to die, a frosty cold sword had slain the people in black, saving her from the clutches of fate. She clearly remembered the day when the pure white flower petals danced chaotically in the sky and a green fox's shadow whistled through it. That sword strike brought along a breathtaking beauty that was like a brand that could never be erased from her heart. She didn't even have time to thank him. She didn't even have time to ask for his name. He looked back at her from the top of the cliff only a second before he left. After that quick glance, he had been gone for 10,000 years. After leaving the eastern profound peak, David and Paxson headed in the direction of the heavenly Marshall Peak. Along the way, Paxson still seemed to be in a daze. You got the five-leaf dewgrass just like that? The situation was too different from what he had imagined. Paxson started asking questions. What were you two talking about? In what code? Why did Senior Charlotte's attitude suddenly change so much? What kind of bewitching soup did you drink? Can you teach me how to... David glanced at him, shook his head, and said, It's nothing. Just a coincidence. It was indeed quite a coincidence. He did not expect that the fox of Quana, Montel Babel, would be Charlotte's savior. And from the looks of it, Charlotte had a deep obsession with Montel Babel as well. He had only told Charlotte his name, and in exchange, he had obtained a stalk of five-leaf dewgrass. This was an unexpected surprise. As a result, the initial preparations were almost complete. Oh, right. What do you want the five-leaf dewgrass for? He looked at David. And last time, when you asked College Master Lawson for a method to evolve the boundary of blood lineage, what did you find out? It's useful to me, David replied lazily. Then you can ask the Dean for help, or would you rather run around all day? It's not too much trouble. David laughed with a gentle look in his eyes. Indeed, no matter if it was the Crystal Dragon Unicorn's bone marrow, the blood ghost baby flower, or the five-leaf dewgrass, he could ask Master Lawson for help with them all. But David did not do so. He wanted to do everything by himself because the other party was a special person. Ever since he was young, he had never done anything for her. This time, he wished he could personally help her complete this task. Furthermore, there was a reason David had entered the martial sect, he was not an ordinary disciple. Once they reached their destination, it was extremely likely they would leave the martial sect. Therefore, he did not want to establish too many restrictions with this sect. To put it simply, 
he didn't want to owe College Master Lawson too much. After all, the most difficult thing to repay in this world was a favor. I may have to leave Marshall Sec for a period of time. Before I do, please do your best to help me find the source of that string of runes, David reminded Paxson. Leave? Where are you going? Paxson asked in confusion. Northern Waters Ice Domain. After separating from Paxson, David headed straight for the place Aaron and June stayed. On top of a mountain peak filled with spirit energy, an elegant courtyard house was built. The moment David walked in, a black shadow rushed toward him. With a slight movement, he caught the black shadow with his hand and laughed. Twilight, why are you welcoming me today? David laughed again and carelessly rubbed Twilight's fluffy head. The black and white cat let out a light meow and squinted, seeming to enjoy it a little. The sound of footsteps came from down the hallway. A tall and elegant figure walked out. He's too bored. No one ever plays with him. Where's Aaron? Are you alone? David asked as June walked out alone. June nodded her head. I'm about to break through my eternal stage during my closed-door cultivation. Is that so? David's eyes lit up. It wouldn't be long before he would break through the eternal stage, too. And it seemed that Northern Sky Peakmaster had spent all his efforts painstakingly nurturing Aaron. Aaron was doing well. David was happy to see it. Comparatively, June appeared somewhat gloomy. When everyone gave priority to the geniuses who were at the boundary of blood lineage of holy body, she, who had only the profound body, was gradually ignored by the higher-ups. Even if David gave her a hundred star key marks and her cultivation increased by more than most people's, it was still behind because the top geniuses kept advancing. Seeing the sadness in June's beautiful eyes, David first put down the balanced energy demonic beast in his hands. Then he walked forward and said, Get ready. We will leave the Marshall Sect tomorrow morning. Leave? June was startled. How could that be? It's only a temporary absence, David replied. Where are we going? To search the Northern Waters Ice Domain for the Ice Divine Stone. Inside the spacious and quiet cave,